building a nest for the devil to lay his eggs, poisonous eggs in, and then they hatch later. We also know anger is, is not good, it's sinful, if we have an unforgiving spirit in us. Look at verse 31 in Ephesians. I call this the chain reaction of a lost temper. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Anger often begins with bitterness. Somebody done me wrong type of feeling. It begins with that seed of bitterness planted in her heart. And if not rooted out, and rooted up and out, it turns to the next one. Wrath. The Greek, that word means literally to burn. Or a slow burn. It's a fire that smolders in our heart. And it's ready for any fuel to fan it aflame. If unchecked, it turns into anger. That word there means wrath turned inside out. Anger, what people see on the outside. Wrath is what people see, what we have on the inside. But the anger here is what people see on the outside. And you know, it's when the eyes narrow and Veins bulge and the skin tightens and the jaws clench and you're about to have a spell. That kind of anger. I find it interesting, the Hebrew word for anger, there's a number of them, but one of the Hebrew words for anger, it, it means face or, or nose. It comes from the word Hebrew, face or nose. and It's the idea of nostrils flaring. And, <laughs> and uh, you, if, if you've ever met somebody that's really angry, you can see it on his face, it's, oh, their face. It's, it's contorted, it's distorted. It, the nostrils flare. Smoke comes out. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but anger, if not checked, turns into clamor. That's loud quarreling or, or hollering. Ever notice that the angrier you get, the more you raise your voice? When somebody says, you don't have to yell, we yell back, I'm not yelling! But when clamor is allowed to continue, it turns into evil speaking. That word is, it, it means blasphemy. or It's translated as blasphemy in other places, but it means abusive or blasphemous language. It's when you begin to say things that you don't really want to say, but you say them anyways. And then you're sorry about it later. Someone has wisely said that he, he who has a sharp tongue cuts his own throat. But finally, evil speaking turns into malice, literally wickedness. And that's when the, the verbal heat turns into physical harm. That's like when the husband slaps a wife, and when uh, he shoves the children or kicks the dog. When an inward attitude turns into an outward action. You know the kind that can wreck marriages and ruin lives. I had a brother who recently in the church tell me, I know he's, he's, I prayed with him about anger before, but he's told me, well, I'm not having so much trouble with that now. Because I've realized that anger only hurts me. And that's, there's a destructive part of, the, of a destructive nature of, of anger. Think about it. Those who have anger uncontrolled, have they not lost friends? Lost jobs? You saw the guy in the video. Thought he was, he lost his job. He was separated from his wife. Many lose their wives or husbands because of anger. Lose their children and lose their health. Doctors say that those who don't manage their anger well have five times the uh, five times more of the chance of heart trouble, and it makes sense, doesn't it? That's how you identify wicked anger or sinful anger. But let's look at virtuous anger. Is there virtuous anger? Is it okay for a, a Christian to be angry? Well, the verse says, be angry and sin not. 
Now, it's debatable whether that's a command to be angry or not, but some say it is a command there, but some say, no, it's not a command, but it just helps you to, to deal with it when you do have it, recognizing that we, we all have anger. It is an emotion that we all have. But, but in your anger, if you're angry or when you're angry, it says don't sin with it. So it's possible to have those feelings, those emotions of anger, but not it to come out or to remain in in a sinful way. Amen? <clears throat> I've noticed verse 29 in Proverbs, chapter 29 of Proverbs that we just looked at. What's the difference between, I've asked myself, what's the difference between a sinful man, or a foolish man and a wise man, rather? A foolish man and a wise man. Well, it seems that they both have some, some anger or some angry feelings. But it says a fool gives full vent to his anger. But a wise man keeps himself under control. That's the difference. The one just lets it all out. But the other keeps it under control. It's kind of like, I know many of you have barbecued and like to barbecue. But what happens if, if you, you know, often, most often, at least, one, the barbecue that we have at home, it has a lid. But without the lid, the flames just go everywhere. And you get your meat burned up and not tasting so good. But when you put the lid down, you're able to get some nice taste in meat, just the way you like it. Enables, enables you to control the flames. And anger is like a fire. But a wise man, wise man or woman is, are those who are able to take a hold of what God has provided, a lid. And that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. To put a lid on that fire. So we'll be sweet instead of burn up. <laughs> Aristotle said, a man who is angry on the right grounds, against the right person, in the right manner, at the right moment, and for the right length of time, deserves great praise. I know no one better or who is able to be that than Jesus Christ. What did Jesus look like when he was angry? We do, 